Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and we're talking Photoshop CS5. Today's tutorial is brought to you by MediaCats, your leading source for instructor-led training. Let's go ahead and jump right in. You can see on front of you that I have the MediaCats logo, and this is a 2D layer. What I'm going to do is convert this into a 3D mesh using the new Repose function. I'll go up to the menu and choose 3D, and I want you to notice that Repose is not available. This is because I need to make my selection, that layer, an active selection. Right? So I'll go ahead and I'll do that really quick. And now I'll go back to the 3D menu, and we have Repose. Now it's worth noting that when you're using the tool, you can convert a text layer, you could convert a layer mask, a working path, or in my case, I'm using a current selection. So I'll go ahead and pick that command, and it'll take just a second to open up the Repose dialog box. Once it does that, you're going to notice that this is indeed a 3D object. I'll go ahead and rotate it. You can see that the logo and the text have been extruded. First thing that I'm going to do is just change the depth. Right? So I'll change this from 1. It's really deep. I'll change it to 0.1. And that basically changes the depth. So if I rotate this, now it's still extruded but not as deep. Right? I have some various tools. You can see I'm using the tool to rotate the object. I have a tool to move it in 3D space. I have a tool to slide the mesh forward and backwards in 3D space. And then I also have the ability to scale this, so I could scale the logo down. So I just scale it and I'll kind of move it, but I want to rotate it back front facing. There are some other functions. You have some shape presets. So if I just pick another shape preset, you'll see in a moment that it's going to kind of bow this out and bevel it some more. And hey, that looks kind of like a little balloon but I'll choose the extrude function that I started with because I want that for my mesh. As it takes it back, and once again it made it really long, I'll dial that down to 0.1, and then I'm going to rotate this again. I want you to see that I have the logo, but I'd like to knock out the cat's eyes and knock out the ring. Right? So this is considered an internal constraint. So what I need to do is go down to the section that says internal constraints. I'm going to grab one of the tools and I'm going to click the path that is the eye. And you can see that right now that path is inactive, so I'm going to change that to say that the eye is a hole. I want to punch that out. Right? So it punches that out, takes but a second, and that looks pretty good. If I rotate the mesh, you can see, indeed, that's punched out. That's exactly what I want. But I'm going to have an issue when I try and punch out the ring. So I'm going to go ahead and select the path that is the inside of the ring, and I'll go ahead and try and make that a hole. When I do this, I'm going to get an error message. It says it cannot change this constraint to a hole because it contains other constraints. The issue here is that if I knock out the internal gray circle, the cat's head is going to be free-floating. There's nothing holding it. Right? Essentially, it's an internal constraint inside of another one. So I won't be able to punch this out the way that I want. Right? So what I'm going to do is actually cancel Repose and show you how I worked around this particular issue. Hey, let's jump back to the screen. I'll go ahead and cancel this. It'll take a second. And what I've done is I've turned around and I've made two separate layers. So if I hide the original logo, I've taken the ring and the text and made that one layer, and then I turned around and made the cat's head a separate layer. Right? This way, the eyes will be the internal constraint for the cat's head, and I can punch those out. And then the ring stands basically on its own. So I'll select that layer, I'll make it a selection, and this time I'm going to use the 3D panel instead of the menu to show you that you can click Create and make a 3D Repose object. Once again, it's going to bring up the dialog box. It takes a second, and you can see that this is extruded. Now, I'm not going to twist this or move this. What I want to do is just set my base functions. So I'm not going to rotate this in 3D space because what I want to do is just knock out the paths. So once again, I'll go to Internal Constraints at the bottom, and I'm going to pick the path that is the circle and make that a hole. Okay, it takes a second and knocks it out, and then I'm going to turn around and fix the text. So the letter D has an internal path. I'll also knock that out, and then I have to take care of each letter A. So go to the letter A. I'll knock those out. Okay, I'll go to the next one, knock that out. Okay, once I have both of those, now I'm going to click OK. 
Now it's worth noting the reason I didn't rotate the object or play with the lights or mess with the background or anything is because I have the cat's head as a separate piece. So I want to be able to move those at the same time. So I'm first going to set my 3D extrusion settings and I'll merge the two layers together. Okay? So let's jump to the cat's head. I'll turn that on and I'll pick the same functions. Go to the 3D layer, make that a repose object. Okay? It reminds me I have to make it a selection first. That's okay. I'll do that. Click create again. And now I have repose. I once again will turn this to 0.1 for the extrusion and then I'll use the internal constraints to knock out the eyes. So each time I'm going to say that that's a hole. You can see they get knocked out pretty quickly. This is a smaller object. There I have that. I'll go ahead and just pick a lighting function and then I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have essentially two 3D layers, but what I'd like to do is kind of rotate these both at the same time. It would be nice to kind of move them just like I did before. Right? So I need to merge the layers together. I'm going to make one other change before I do that, and that's just to edit the lighting on this repose object. So I'm just going to add some lights to it real quick. So I'll give it some cold lights for the text. That looks pretty good. Click OK. And now I'm ready to merge the layers together. So I'll select both layers at the same time. So shift select in the layers panel. I have both layers highlighted. And then from the 3D menu, I'll choose merge 3D layers. This is going to combine them together. And now I have one 3D mesh object. Right? So I'm going to go to the 3D panel. And now you'll see that I can choose to scale these items. So I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. Then I'm going to go and rotate this and I can rotate the merged layer. So there's the merged layer rotated. I'll grab my move tool in the 3D panel. I'm going to go ahead and just move this in 3D space. Turn on my background. And there you have it. This has been the Repese feature inside of Photoshop CS5. I'm AJ Wood. I hope you'll join me again. You have an awesome day.